All right, welcome to the second part of the video. If you haven't seen the first one yet, you might want to do so to obtain a more complete understanding of what we're talking about here. This is how I healed 95% of my incurable skin disease, atopic eczema, in less than half a year. My virtual mentor was Rob Stewart, a skin health expert here on YouTube. I bought his three-phase workbook and followed the way it worked. He made a video on my success story, but a few details were unclear. This is one of the reasons I'm making this video, to be more precise about how I did it. His video link is in the description. More help and understanding came from Tristan from Primal Edge Health, Dr. Berg, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, Ancestral Health Guy, Western A. Price's books, Iguchi Natural Health, and many others. There will be a package of useful information links down in the description. I am extremely grateful to everyone who played a part in my healing. Thank you so much. Now, before we start, if you have eczema right now, you're gonna have to carve your own way through it. This is just an overview of my experience, some tools that helped me, common triggers and a few leads for you to start with, basically. So let's start from the beginning. As a child, I was a healthy kid. The only skin-related thing that I had that my mom now vaguely remembers because I had three years of eczema was the sort of childhood mildly dry patches of skin that most kids have. No diagnosis, no real problems, but I'll mention this for the sake of transparency. My grandpa had some sort of allergies that an Estonian witch helped him heal and a part of the treatment was animal fats. So there might be some sort of correlation, a genetic component with the sensitivity and keeping the sensitivity down with animal foods and animal fats. But I never had any problems with my skin until I went vegan for three years. I've always been an active, healthy, vital young guy. It was never a thing until then. So after three years of veganism, this is how my skin looked like. This is how my body looked like. The eczema was fluctuating somewhat, but never really went away. It was a constant flare-up. Some parts were open wounds for many months. And you know, seasons, sunshine, vitamin D didn't play a role in my case at all. I know it comes and goes for some people. I visited a number of doctors, dermatologists in different towns. They did what dermatologists do, right? They prescribed me corticosteroid creams, which helped very fast. But after the treatment cycle, the eczema came back 10 times stronger. This is what you gotta understand about this skin disease. There is so much unhelpful information and bad advice out there. From Western medicine to alternative medicine, herbal remedies, Ayurveda, all sorts of therapies. I read so many books on eczema, most of it is useless crap. The only eczema book that I would recommend besides Rob Stewart's workbook and Primal Edge Health's Carnivore Cookbook is Karen Fisher's eczema book. But it didn't really give me a full understanding. Beware of fake doctors and healers who treat this way too lightly without real understanding and responsibility. Some of them themselves have full-blown eczema while they are treating others. Trendy nutritionists on Instagram with their superficial posts, bad advice, ideological health gurus and so on, just fuck them. Instead, focus on what works for you for real and take advice from people who have actual understanding and actual experience and actual success with healing eczema. Like for instance, Rob. This is a serious topic. Eczema is constantly on the rise. There's more and more people getting it. And you gotta be aware that the physiological suffering is accompanied with this psychological desperation because of all this superficial fake advice that doesn't work. This is why I find this information valuable enough to talk about. Moving on. So these corticosteroid creams, um, the problem with these prescriptions is that there's a thing called TSW, topical steroid withdrawal, which is a battle on its own to heal from, in addition to the eczema itself. How I healed myself took care of both, because I had both. And after these, doctors prescribed me immunosuppressant kind of creams without any steroids. That worked fine as well, but it didn't really address the root cause, the root issues. It just covered up the symptoms. It kept coming back and then there's these antihistamine pills. They help for a while, but then you build up a tolerance, your body gets used to them, so it wears off, it comes back. I had some blood tests done while I was still vegan and had full-blown eczema. No pet or food allergies, even the common ones like nuts, gluten, dairy, whatever. 
but what I did have was allergy for dust mites, which basically means dust mite droppings and fungi. So I had sensitivity for these things. This is caused by an injured gut. Way too many hard to digest plant foods, excess fiber, anti-nutrients, and no animal fats to maintain the wall, digestive tract basically. This results in hypersensitivity, allergies, and an autoimmune kind of response, which atopic eczema basically is. I also had an overgrowth of the candida yeast because of all the sugar and carbs in vegan foods. My sort of general body inflammation, the IgE, was through the roof. If you look at the normal kind of referral numbers, the levels, it's 0 to 95. Mine was more than 2000, so the machine couldn't register how much inflammation was throughout my body. When I healed about half of my eczema, I had a follow-up blood test and it still showed more than 2000. I wasn't even red anymore. So it really took many months. I tried an omnivore approach, then I went vegan again in a different way, without oils, without sugars, like all sorts of different ways to make it work. Nothing worked until this. This is the healing part. If you are serious about healing your skin, don't just copy me, get the workbook and understand the thing for real. The protocols and phases are not exactly what I'm going to talk about, this is what works for me. The healing consists of food, movement, habits and topical stuff. The food is about healing your gut. It's introducing essential foods, abstaining from unfitting foods, healing the gut, because that's what eczema is. It's a gut-related ailment and should therefore be treated with a more holistical approach. Movement is about moving your lymphatic system because it doesn't really have a pump. There's some small ones, but it doesn't really work until you really move yourself to help your body get rid of excess stuff. All sorts of exercise aligns your body in all sorts of ways, hormones, circadian rhythm, all sorts of stuff. Now, habits and topical stuff, this is your daily diary, cold exposure, sleep improvement, all sorts of protocols like salt baths, fasting, enemas, certain cleanses, salt flushes, things to try out, things to maintain, things when it comes to the actual surface of your skin, also some healthy habits, and of course the sort of mentality part of healing comes into play in this segment. And right before we dive into these segments, the first thing to know, the daily diary. Even if you don't try anything else right now, make this your tool. Start with this. For instance, your phone notes. Every day you write up a few sentences, the highlights of your day. What did you eat? How did you feel? Morning mood, moods, energy levels. What tastes better? What are you craving for? What you don't really enjoy? How your shit looks like? What parts of your skin are the worst? What are better? Elasticity, is there pus somewhere? What works well digestively? If you fart, that's bad and so on. A few sentences every day makes a huge difference. This is your king of data. This is your trusted source of truth. This is your experience. You can track everything back to see what works and what doesn't as fact, as a rational fact. Your skin itself won't be the real indicator here. It's a slow biomarker, a slow signal from the body. Sometimes it might take a week for it to show you that what you were doing is wrong. So you have to pay attention to all the other stuff. Food. So let's start this segment off with fasting, no food. My real healing started with a three day water fast. Just drinking water and chilling out. All sorts of intermittent fastings are also great tools for healing eczema. Now I mostly do it intermittently, switch it up a little bit, skip dinner, skip breakfast, eat more at lunchtime. It's easy to maintain this kind of fasting. See, when you have eczema, after a while, after getting all these different advices, it would appear that no foods really fit for you, according to these health authorities. Everything is bad for you. I mean, it's a running joke in this eczema video comment sections. Like, according to these health experts, I can eat nothing. I should just drink water all the time. And you know, in that joke, there's the key. You should start with fasting. Fasting is the go-to treatment for flare-ups. The process itself is called autophagy. There's a bunch of other benefits. You can learn about this from Dr. Berg. He has a really good video about this, explaining exactly what happens at what time when you're fasting. A good way to start is just not eating after six o'clock. It's much easier for your body to digest when it's upright and moving. You will scratch way less at night if you don't eat in the evenings. You'll fall asleep much easier. So from the evening until morning, you're basically fasting until breakfast breaks your fast. Now, it's important to actually listen to your body to learn the differences between appetite and hunger. 
real hunger strikes, that's when you break your fast. You, you don't just go hero mode, like I'm a fast for five days, man. You have to listen to your body. When it's a metallic sort of pulling in the throat, that's real hunger. Your body did all the processes, all the cleanup, and it's ready to get some nutrition. It's important to introduce some easy to digest foods, not go full on, just, you know, build it up step by step to get into digestive mode again. So food becomes fuel. It is no longer just a pleasure kind of thing. You are eating ingredients, not so much dishes or recipes. One would say medicine becomes your food, your food becomes medicine. I wouldn't say that because it can be very misleading. If you're eating strong, potent stuff like garlic all the time, you'll be harming yourself. So I won't say that. I would rather say something like eat the food that heals you, don't eat the food that kills you. Now everyone will have different staple foods as they go along, according to the outcomes of their daily diary. Outcomes with digestion. Bloating and farts are bad. Good digestion and satiation are good. Good mood is good. Shit should look right, etc. This is how you find out your staple foods and foods to avoid. In my case, and in the case of the majority of Rob Stewart's clients, this is how it generally goes. Foods that are off the menu. Coffee, spices, nuts and seeds hard to digest plants, especially raw and especially pesticide sprayed. Excess sugar, pastry, cheap plant oils to fry with. You should be using tallow instead. Um, sometimes olive oil is fine. Sugary alcohol, if you really need to drink, drink good quality vodka or something like that. Teas, teas have tannins and caffeine. In my case, I was drinking a lot of tea and I just had to ditch it all because it was creating excess heat all the time. Um, all sorts of flavor enhancers, emulsifiers. You know what an emulsifier does? It takes water and oils, makes it creamy, makes it mix when it shouldn't mix. Well, that creates really nice consistency that we like in food, but it keeps doing the same effect in your gut. It's destroying the gut lining because it's mixing the oils and waters. Preservatives, obviously bad for digestion. Karen Fisher in her book said that the yellow artificial coloring is especially bad targeting eczema people. I found out that citruses don't work for me. I'm not sure if that's the citrus itself or all the pesticides because citruses are, you know, sort of foamy, they take everything in. Anyway, you will find more foods to avoid, trigger foods as you go along. Now, foods that are on the menu, easy to digest foods, raw salmon, fish, grass-fed beef, mutton, wild animals, high quality eggs, especially the yolks, good butter, tallow, sauerkraut, fermented cabbage. I usually just drink the juice. You can buy this in Estonia in normal shops. Mushrooms are often fine, uh, soft lettuce. Fruit and berries are okay, usually as seasonal produce, high quality without the pesticides. I usually peel them to be sure. Later, when you heal your gut more, you can introduce tubers, see if they fit. Some people with eczema have a hypersensitivity towards nightshades, so might be tricky. Raw milk, especially raw goat milk. If you have a problem with milk, then switch to raw because pasteurized milk is nutritionally ruined and also ethically the raw milk animals are treated well because you cannot boil it later. With the pasteurized stuff it can be a sick animal and it'll just boil the stuff anyways. So for your digestion, for yourself, for the animals stick to raw and also goat milk is more similar to human milk so cow milk sensitivities can sometimes try that out. It's a bit more expensive, but it works well. Excellent foods for healing the gut lining are bone broths and colostrum. In Estonia, you can buy colostrum as powders and then mix it up with some raw milk. White rice is the preferred choice instead of the brown ones because there's less anti-nutrients. It's just carbs. Organ meats, amazing. Nutrient-dense foods. Honey works fine for me. If you're making tea, for instance, and you're adding honey, don't just write up you have tea. You have tea with honey. So yeah, keep experimenting, writing it all up, and you'll find your staple foods. Almost all allergies come from the plant kingdom. It is very rare to have problems with digestion when you're eating high-quality animal foods. Now, if you're overweight, keto is the way to go. It's great for weight loss. You're burning ketones and fat instead of glucose and sugar and carbs. In my case, I wanted to gain weight, so I didn't stick to it. I didn't want to lose weight. But it's basically abstinence from carbs and sugars and eating high-fat, good-quality foods. About water. There is such a thing as overhydration. I don't remember the last time I drank so much water but I'm filming and talking for hours, so this is why I'm drinking it. 
Overhydration is when you drink too much water and you flush out minerals and electrolytes out of your system. Electrolytes are the things that regulate hydration in your cells, in your body. If you flush them out, it has a drying effect, the opposite. It's better to get liquids from certain foods, such as cucumbers, raw milk, some juices. It's easier to integrate that sort of water. Though I still drink water sometimes, especially mineral water makes me feel good. During the healing process, I tried out juice fasting, made my own raw juices. But now I look at that as just a huge sugar festival. An animal food way to do that would be drinking bone broth all day. And I have done that with uh, lamb bone broth that I boil myself. That works well. You see, this is why Rob in his video about my success story said that I went vegan to cure my eczema. While, no, I got eczema while I was vegan. But after trying to work on it through the omnivore style and it not being enough, I went vegan again as a first phase of his workbook. I did it differently this time, took away all the oils, but I failed to find a single staple food that would work for me, just constant diarrhea, it was very, very bad. So I quickly moved on to the animal food testing phase, went super fine, and uh, I don't fry that often. I usually boil the organs, use the oven, try to keep a lot of foods rare. The eggs I only fry one-sided, so the egg yolk is raw, way better digestion. Boiled eggs I don't eat at all completely different food and at some point I only ate the yolks because the egg whites can block biotin uh, absorption biotin is in the yolks but I use the instant pot this is a really nice tool to boil bone broth for instance if I buy some mutton some lamb I cut up the meat the organs put it in the fridge and the bones well the bone marrow is amazing so I eat the bone marrow as much as I can reach it and if I don't reach it anymore I put it all in the pot boil it for a really long time and I get this really nourishing sort of traditional bone broth without having to stand there all day and well after it's boiled after it cools down the fat layer that rises to the top that basically becomes my skin cream way better than all pharma cream the plant oils I'll talk about this later I also use the pot to render tallow to make kefir from raw milk yogurt great little thing also useful for plant preparation you don't need to use oils yeah nice little thing so probiotics are great to have in your diet kefir is good source fermented things like sauerkraut i mentioned the juice there are some fermented probiotic pills skinessa just make sure it's good quality stuff that actually works because there's so many products out there that are fake that don't work that are scam invest in quality healthy gut bacteria and a healthy microbiome is the key here. Good foods, build it up. Abstinence from bad foods, keep it up. Another thing to consider in your diet are some helpers like antifungal things. For instance, if the blood results show that you have candida overgrowth, you should abstain from sugars, stop feeding it sugars. And then your helpers would be Pau d'Arco, garlic pills, some other antifungal things like oregano oil, but this stuff is so strong, so potent, it was way too strong for me. Activated charcoal is great to bind sort of pathogens and bring it out of your system. Some people do parasite cleanses, but if you don't really have parasites, then you're causing unnecessary stress on your digestive system and uh, that's not good. Some like to add magnesium citrate to their diet if they're eating mostly animal foods. But don't just buy a bunch of pills and supplements like I did at some point before I really knew what's going on. They are just small supporters and sometimes it's smart to just leave them all out as a part of the elimination diet. And remember, even if you slip, you have a cheat meal, no need to feel bad, this is part of the journey. Write all the crap up that you ate, all your biomarkers as usual, just a few sentences, this is good, jump on track. Next segment, movement and exercise. The most underrated, overlooked exercises is walking. It's the easiest way to maintain a regular body movement. You're pumping your lymphatic system. You're resetting everything in your body. You're aligning, you're resetting your breathing, resting your eyes, and you're getting the most natural workout there is. Running is good, especially if you're overweight. Swimming is great. Just look out for chlorine if you're sensitive to that. Find some sort of natural body of water to swim in. If you live in a place that allows climbing, climbing is good. Yoga is great because you're resetting your nervous system, you're 
sort of uniting your body with your breath. Stretches are great. For me, my best exercise is the one that I made a video about as well. It's a sort of calisthenics, body weight, full body, natural kind of pumping, an hour, a cycle that I keep repeating. It's my go-to thing. Check it out, link in description. Now, every exercise that you do, whatever it is, should be followed with cold exposure, cold therapy, a cold shower. You can shower, end it with a cold shower, and after a cold shower, I usually apply some tallow or lamp fat or geese fat on the driest parts of my skin. Amazing. I don't need to apply cream all the time, only after a cold shower. The benefits of cold exposure are really popular and talked about, but if you don't know about this, check out Wim Hof, link in the description, amazing habit to incorporate in your life. Next segment, habits and topical stuff. Now, moisturization is important, but from my experience, the pharmaceutical creams are a waste of money. I tried 10 of them, wasted hundreds of euros. And from the plant oils and creams, I'd say shea butter is the best. Coconut oil sort of creates an itchy layer and after a while it starts drying out the skin. Jojoba oil is way too oily and the rest is crap. The single best moisturization that I found is tallow or lamp fat or geese fat right after a cold shower. These fats get absorbed in the skin very fast, leaving no itchy layers. They have vitamins and it's really inexpensive to make yourself. Now you're gonna want to switch from laundry detergents into something more hypoallergenic and natural like these saponin containing uh, washing nuts. I know that you can use chestnuts for this, we just use the imported ones right now. That's what you're looking for, hypoallergenic, no perfumes, things like that. If you have eczema on your hands when you're washing dishes, wear gloves. At this point I use Dr. Bronner's soap, but usually soap based things are not very good for eczema. There are other ways to clean yourself. One of the ways, especially if you have open areas of eczema, is the soft bath. You don't need a bath for this. You just need some sort of container, fill it up with water, add good quality salt, like sea salt. You don't want this Himalayan crap and you don't want this iodized stuff. Celtic salt, Mediterranean salt, sea salt baths, they sort of clean gently, also aggressively, but effectively clean the torn skin and get rid of this oily, itchy residue. After this, it's a shower, cold shower, tallow. So from my experience, this routine along with fasting are the two most valuable tools for treating flare-ups, which I still sometimes get these mini flare-ups. You might see some redness under my right eye right now because of uh, excess sugar. This is why I'm saying this is 95% healed. The 5% is the one that is still guiding me as I'm picking foods. It's really easy to eat crap again when you're 95% healed. These are so small compared to what I had, but I just know my skin and I know that I have these small parts that are still, as I'm introducing these new foods, the 5% that is left to be healed is still guiding me towards the 100. But if I track my notes back, I can see that the first three months took care of 60% of my skin, five months, 80%, six months, 90%. It was really rapid for such a severe, long time, you know, uncurable disease, real healing. Let's continue. Your towels should be clean. No mold, no residues, no bacteria growing there. You need to become aware of everything that you're surrounded with every day, what you come into contact with. I, with my dust allergy, had to cut my dreads off because they were collecting dust too easily because of their texture. You have to make sacrifices. Some people, they move homes because there's an uncontrollable, untreatable, unfixable, uh, you know, mold problem or something gotta look around your home you know you have to replace some sort of uh, incense sticks with essential oil diffusers if your apartment or home or room is too dry invest in a good humidifier only buy clothes that are good quality natural materials silk and cotton are your friends definitely cut all your nails all the time at least once a week I used to play guitar a lot and I liked having nails on my right fingers had to go, no question. It's a good habit to also uh, try to get used to a lighter blanket because a heavy blanket can create, you know, trapped heat and the heat will make you sometimes not even sweat but just create some itchiness or irritability. Light blankets, I use this sort of light cotton one. It feels like it's breathing but it's also nice and heavy. So invest in things like that. Sunshine every day. In addition to vitamin D, 
there's all these other nutrients that you catch through your skin and through the glands around your eyes. This balances out your hormones. Um, the more sunshine you can catch at noontime, the better you will fall asleep in the evening. Blue light blockers and um, programs like Flux are also useful for this. And then there's grounding, walking bare feet, getting yourself into natural bodies of water, laying on the ground sometimes. I can physically feel this every time I do it. It's like letting go of excess heat, excess electricity from the body. I know it sounds a little bit like hippy deepy, but just try it out. Just grow conscious of it. It's a real thing. Then there's the coffee enema. Uh, I did this because it was in the workbook. I actually liked it, but you're gonna have to learn about this on your own. There's these other cleanses like um, salt flushes, liver and gallbladder flushes, cleanses. Uh, I did some of those, but I didn't like them. They are proving to be beneficial for some people though, to get rid of gunk. CBD oil. I wouldn't recommend a product because it's distracting. Your real healing is much more holistic than that. A product is not gonna fix you. But when I had real trouble sleeping because that's when you scratch yourself the most, I was waking up bloody and stuff, then CBD oil helped me to sort of sedate myself be sure to invest in quality though. Let's talk about weed for a second. Even if you're smoking it, which you shouldn't if you're trying to heal your skin. But what you gotta understand botanically is that weed, just like nettle for instance, is an accumulative plant. So everything that's in the soil, it literally takes in like a sponge. And if these plants, whether it's grown for CBD oil, for medicine, for uh, hemp, or for your smoking, if they're grown with synthetic cheap fertilizers, then the sponge is getting all these heavy metals from the synthetic fertilizers into the buds and everywhere. You're smoking it, you're taking the concentrated oils of heavy metals into your body. So if you're gonna do this, because there's more and more, especially in Estonia, if you look around Instagram and stuff, there's so many CBD oils, CBD tervis, CBD puncte. Some of them are good, and some of them are getting cheaper and cheaper, which is fucking shady. Something to consider, investing quality. And if you're having trouble sleeping because you're scratching while you're sleeping at night, you're gonna want to get a silk shirt, long sleeved shirt. They have a cooling effect and wear cotton gloves. This will help you, you know, prevent yourself from puncturing your skin. Sometimes you wouldn't even scratch yourself, you would just sort of rub between your fingers and it will create this sort of lesions in places. Uh, use band-aids to cover that up. Cotton gloves, silk shirt. Once you start healing your inflamed skin and it's not as red and inflamed anymore, uh, it's gonna get flaky, sort of light and flaky, especially when fasting. You do not want to scratch it off because you're, even if you're careful, you're gonna rub it, you're gonna start puncturing it. So what you wanna do is get a nice dry brush and do dry brushing. Rob has his videos about this. It's also part of the workbook with a bunch of other things. This is what I use for my teeth. It has no salicylates, no fluoride. You can make your own paste. I just buy this. Uh, there are also small habits like squatting, which is good for digestion. Slavic people know what's good. And then there's socializing with the right people. Obviously, you're gonna need to socialize, especially with good supportive people. But if your social circle is not letting you stay on track, eat right, maintain all these habits, write everything up, then you're gonna have to be willing to lose anyone, everyone who doesn't have anything to do with your future. At least for the healing period, you're gonna have to make decisions, man. For this healing period, you're gonna have to stop drinking, stop smoking, drugs, eating crap mindlessly. You gotta really freaking want this nice skin. And people without eczema will never understand this. You gotta be your own savior. Get your shit together! And then there's the pharma creams, right? Doctors would say that you have to cover yourself every day, all the time, many times a day. Some doctors actually told me you have to apply this eight or 10 times a day. Well, what you're doing is you are training your body, making it more and more dependent on these creams, training your body not to create its own secretions. So you should instead sort of taper off, you know, add the creams after a shower, tallow, and then after a while, you know, your body will start secreting its own sort of things while you're healing. The goal is to eventually be independent from creams, right? So all of these things here, one by one, little by little, through your own consistency, 
untangle the downward spiral of eczema, the witch's circle. That's the way out. Coconut oil doesn't fix everything. Plant medicines are not your friends if your symptoms are caused by the plants themselves. Corticosteroids don't address the root issues. No product will miraculously heal you. You and your consistency will heal you. It's a warrior mindset. Yeah, it's a personal thought, but um, for me, one of the thoughts that actually helped me you know, be driven was the idea that if I want to be a dad, if I want to get children in the future, I couldn't live with myself if I would have them also with aggressive, severe eczema without me, their provider, protector and guider in this world, being able to help them. I wouldn't know how to help them. So I had to heal myself already because of this. We are responsible for not only ourselves and our health and our wellness, but also of, you know, our genetics and the future people. If you are in eczema pain right now, remember the pain. This pain will become the fruitfulness for tomorrow. It will be your strength, your fuel, your focus and your determination during your healing. And as I said, the world of nutritionists, of health experts, of health authorities is so wide and buried. Make sure you filter out the bullshit and you focus in on the people who had real success, real experience with this and take responsibility. The package of links of this helpful information will guide you and in the end you will be your authority, your savior and your own healer. Thanks for watching, feel good and be creative and I'll see you in the next less controversial, slightly more peaceful sort of video. Bye for now.